Hi, Sue Wilson here, and I have a brand new set of dies to show you today. I'm very excited about this new release. I'm going to show you the card we're going to be making today, and then I'll introduce you to all the new dies. Isn't that pretty? So the first die that we'll be using is the background from the new French collection. It's beautifully detailed, absolutely stunning this die is. Next up is the Salzburg die from the Austrian collection. It's a gorgeous de uh, detailed oval. And we're going to be making flowers with the Delicate Daisy. This is the complete petal. It also marries up with a sister die that's the open petal that you'll see in other videos. The sentiment today is from the special sentiment set from Creative Expressions. And we'll be making our flowers out of the white tulle. It's a lovely netting that I use on cards quite a bit, and I'll show you how to cut those. Okay, so let me explain what we're going to be doing first up, is you can always add um, a die on top of a background, but what I wanted to do here was to create a little more depth. So I've cut an aperture into the background, so you're kind of looking down into it. I think it's really pretty this way, and it's very, very easy to do. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've cut the die, the French collection for you, because it's really detailed and I didn't want to have to waste time taking out all the little pieces. But we're going to use one of the cutting rings from the Salzburg to take a section out of it. So let me get my dies here, or my uh, plates. I'm going to take the inner cutting ring and I'm just going to tape it into place right in the center here. Using removal tape, that's fine. I'll take a little piece out of that. So you can do this with any background, but I love the way it looks with this one. It's really, really pretty. So now, because that leaves uh, an edge that's got um, little cut areas, you want to hide that, but give yourself that pretty aperture. So we're going to go to work with a section building it up with the Salzburg. So let me take this apart. We're going to use this. I've already pre-cut the outer ring, and I've got some aqua card that I want to do a little bit of backing with. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to glue this into place. A little bit of Cosmic Shimmer Dries Clear Glue does the trick. I'm just going to put it around the edges here in little dots. You don't want to be too heavy handed with this because you don't, you don't actually want it to go into the background, so just tiny little dots should do the trick. It does dry clear though, so don't worry if you do get it onto the back part. And we're going to line this up. Now the, the reason I do it this way is I want to cut a complete frame out of this. And if I try to line up this die with just the background piece first, it may be way off. So if I put them together, get them glued into place, what I can do is I can take that die and I can just sandwich it back into the original cut line, tape it into place. In fact, I'm going to use two just to make sure it stays, and it should be exactly perfect for us. So let's run that through. That should cut with a quick pass. Let's see here. Get myself all untaped. There we go. And don't forget to take your tape off, put your dies back into place on your magnetic sheets. You don't want to lose them. So now I've got a perfectly cut frame there. So I'm going to go ahead and, I've, or I've actually gone ahead and put some mounting foam on the back of that. And what I was going to show you is sometimes when you do this, even though they're both the same size there, you may have a little bit of an edge show. So I always take and just trim it out a tiny bit more. You want to have a little room to seat your mounting foam on, but you might have to just take a little bit off the edge, just so you can't see it as you like look in through the side. So that should do the trick. Yeah, it'd be just like that. So I've created a complete aperture. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to one that I've done earlier. Now I've added some mounting foam to the back and created some depth. And I have stamped a sentiment already. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and line it up in place. Just the little pieces here. Peel the backings of these off. And then you can just put it in 
so it's nice and straight. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do first. Apologize. I'm going to add a little ink. I'm just going to add a little bit of ink to this just to kind of come in and create a tiny little frame. Now I'm using the Aqua Adirondack ink here. It's very, very subtle. But I think it just brings in a really nice little color and frames that sentiment for you. And I'm putting it on with some cut and dry foam and just going in a circular motion really lightly. There we go. And I'm going to give it a, just a quick um, blast with the heat tool because sometimes when your ink is wet, things don't want to stick to it. So you've got to make sure you've got it nice and dry. That should do it. Okay. So now we will take that and center that. And excuse me while I lean over a little bit just to see if I've got it centered. That looks nice. So you can see you've got that depth of your um, aperture already. So we'll put it onto another piece here. Got a little bit of mounting foam on this as well. One of the things I love in cards is dimension, so I do use quite a bit of mounting foam in my card making. And I'll tell you what, let's add just a tiny bit of tape right on the back there. Keep that nice and flat. I'm just going to center that over a larger piece. That looks pretty good. And we're going to put it onto our base piece. Now I've already prepared one with a little bit of aqua card. I've got some Cosmic Shimmer white dots and I'll show you how to do that. And we're just going to do some double sided tape adhesive on it. And then we'll move on and show you how to do that flower. A couple of pieces around the edge here. And let me lean over a little bit so I can see it straight. Not too bad. And see, that's even pretty, just like that. If you're a purist and you like a, a little bit more of a clean look, you could stop there. But I'm going to show you what you can do if you like those flowers, too. I spoke about cutting the flowers out of tulle. Now, tulle is a, it's a, it's a, a netting, basically. Um, Iris has a little bit of a shimmer to it, so it's really, really pretty. Um, to cut it, you can't just run it through with your dies, though. You have to put some cardstock with it. It doesn't seem to want to cut cleanly without that. So I'm going to put my um, Delicate Daisy on there, and I'm going to just tape it into place. And what I've done with that tool, too, is I've got several, um, I've got a, a piece, and then I've folded it several times. So you can actually cut through, oh, about five or six layers all at once, not a problem. So let's pop this onto our plate and run it through. And you can hear the cracking from the die. That's perfectly normal. Let's see if that's done the trick. Yes, it has. And what's really nice about this method is, let's get it all untaped here, is you end up with a, uh, a die cut out of card also. So you've got something you can use for later. And let's pop this out. So when I make these flowers, I will actually do about Mm, anywhere between 12 and 18 layers of the tool. So I'll run it through two or three times and put it together. So you can see there is the die and here is the beautifully cut tool. So all you need to do is get a brad and put it through the center and you can kind of offset these. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and layered them up already and I've just offset them a little bit so it's completely uh, full all the way around. You can also take your heat tool and make sure you've got a um, heat proof mat underneath you and just give it a little bit of a shot because tool will melt very quickly so you can give it a little bit of a wiggle to the um, petals if you do this and it's just up to your personal preference how far you want to take it it can shrink up quite a bit or just a little bit and then let it cool and you can fluff it up just a tiny bit and you get a really, really pretty look that way. So I'm going to seat that onto some ribbon. I've got some of the, um, the seam binding here and I'm going to use a little glue dot. Pop that into place and we'll just offset it about like that. And I'm going to put my flower on with a glue dot on top of that. And what I'm going to do is add in a little pearl. So I'm just going to cover that little brad that I've used and make it something prettier. 
Got an eight millimeter white pearl here. I've put it on with a little bit of Cosmic Shimmer Dries Clear Glue, set that like that. I'm adding a couple of pretty stick pins that I've made. We'll just pop the tips of those into the knot on the bow. And I'll show you how to do that edging with the glue dot. So if we just use our Cosmic Shimmer glue, and this is a lovely product because it's, um, it's a PVA glue and it keeps its shape. So there's a little trick to it and I'll show you. What I do is usually I'll find a piece of scratch paper and just make sure it's flowing. So I'll just start it and make sure, yes, we've got a nice flow, okay? Then I go to the edge I'm going to do and rather than having it touch, I let it drip off and just move it and it'll make perfectly spaced or um, rounded pearls for you. And you can make them bigger if you like. If you want to do some bigger, you can make them little if you like. But what I don't do is I don't touch the tip of the nozzle to the card ever. I just let it rip off the end, just like that. And you go all the way around your card and let that set aside to dry overnight. And you have a gorgeously finished card then. And I think that's a beautiful use of the new dies. I hope you've enjoyed this card too.